The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. In the introductory video for this chapter, we talked about the big challenge of accounts receivable being collection, right? Somebody owes you money, it can be hard to collect, and that takes a lot of time and effort. And in fact, the biggest problem is that some people just never pay. Uh, now, accounting for that gets tricky. What we said was, let's say we earn the revenue in December of this year, and it could be several months before we realize the person's not going to pay. But I need to record the expense, the bad debt expense, in the same year I record the revenue, which becomes a problem. Now, the way accountants have solved this is that we estimate. I was going to say guess, but of course we don't guess. We estimate. It's an educated guess. Uh, and this module, we're going to learn two ways of doing that estimate. Uh, the first way is called the percentage of sales method. This is also called, nice arrow, this is also called the income statement method. I don't know if arrow number two was much better, uh, but you know, you might be reading it in a textbook and they might call it income statement method or your prof might call it that. Uh, the, I think the technical term is the percentage of sales method. It's the simplest of the two and I think it's the worst of the two methods in problem five four we're going to go over the uh, balance sheet method also called the aging of receivables method but let's jump into the percentage of sales method here we go Salazar Inc shows the following information on the May 31st 2024 uh, no the there the company's fiscal year end accounts receivable 235 grand debit Allowance for helpful accounts. This is a new account. I'm going to really get into what it means uh, in a few minutes, but okay. It's this account that's in a debit of 2000. Um, this will always end these questions in a credit. And when we see it on financial statements, it's always a credit. I'll explain how it gets to a debit a little bit later. Uh, sales, $448,000 cash sales, but $1.85 million in total sales. I know it says credit at the top. These aren't credit sales. $1.85 million in sales, four hundred forty-eight dollars are for cash. Let's figure out how many of these sales are on account then. one eight five zero k minus four forty-eight k our total sales minus our cash sales will tell us how many dollars are sold on account. In other words, if I sold 1.85 million in total and 448,000 of those were uh, for cash, the rest must have been sold on account. So uh, we'll call those credit sales. So our credit sales here, 1850 minus 448, uh, I think that's 1402. I'm just gonna calculate that just to be sure. 1850 minus 448, yeah, 1402. Okay. Let's read on. The company's account estimates bad debts to be 2% of credit sales. Okay, well, we've kind of jumped the gun here, but uh, here's the percentage of sales, right? This is called the percentage of sales method. You would, if you were running this company, you would say, well, what percentage of the time do customers not pay? This uh, uh, entrepreneur has said, well, 2% of the time my customers don't pay. One in every 50 of my customers, uh, the debt goes bad. And so they've said, hey, 2% of the, my AR is going to go bad, or 2% of the, the credit sales, rather, are going to go bad. So we've got our credit sales over here, 1402. Let's take 2% of that and figure out what this bad debt is. 1402, times 2%. Um, and let's compute that number, 1402, times 0.02, that's 2%, 28040. Okay, so this is a place where we have a distinction between our two methods. Now, you haven't learned the um, balance sheet method yet. You haven't learned the aging of receivables method. But with the percentage of sales method, the number we calculate here, this number is our bad debt expense. So we've just computed our bad debt expense for the period. 
Now we need to plug it into a journal entry. So step one, when you're doing this, step one is to compute the bad debt expense, take a percentage of your sales. Step two, maybe I'll do this in red ink. Step two is to do a journal entry. And here's our journal entry. It's always the same entry. Uh, it happens on our fiscal year end date, which was May 31st, 2024. We're going to debit. Well, we just computed bad debt expense. We always debit expenses. So let's debit bad debt expense. And we're going to credit an account called allowance for doubtful accounts. Again, I'm going to explain what that account means, but not till the very end of this problem. So just kind of go with me on this one. Now, in future, when I write this, I'm just going to write allowance. Your profs may or may not allow you to do that, but I'm just going to write the word allowance. Um, this bad debt expense is also sometimes called uncollectible account expense. It's the same thing. So anyway, the amount of this was 28040. All right, so there we have it. We've computed our bad debt expense. Uh, we've done part A, prepare an adjustment to the allowance for doubtful accounts based on the information above. Done. Now it says, show how accounts receivable net would be disclosed on the balance sheet. Well, um, I'm going to skip a step. So we'll, we'll do step three in a minute. Step four is showing uh, allowance for or accounts receivable net on the balance sheet. Here's the computation for accounts receivable net. It's accounts receivable minus the allowance for doubtful accounts equals AR net. So we take our total amount of our accounts receivable and the total amount of our accounts receivable is 235. We deduct our allowance. Now here's why we have a step three in between. Uh, we don't know our allowance right now. We have to update our allowance T account to get there. So I'm gonna update that allowance T account. The allowance T account began the question in a debit of 2000, but I've just done a journal entry to credit it by 28,000. So let's do the math here. It began as a debit of 2000. I'm gonna credit it 28,040. Take the big side, the 28 minus the small side two, and I end up at 26,040. That number, that credit balance goes over to part four here, the uh, uh, AR net calculation. 26040 is the ending balance of our allowance. It is a credit. 235 minus 26040 gives us our net AR 208960. Okay, so we've answered the question, but I haven't done a very good job of explaining what's going on here. So mechanically, let's just walk through the mechanics of this. Step one, compute your bad debt expense. You take a percentage of sales, you get the bad debt expense. Step two, plug that number right into a journal entry. The journal entry is always the same. Debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Step three, update your allowance T account based on whatever you did in that journal entry. Step four, show AR minus allowance equals AR net. Okay, so we did a bunch of steps here. But I, I would forgive you if, if you got to the end here and you're like, what did any of this mean? Like, I, I get that I did it. I can mechanically do it. But what does it all mean? So that's uh, what I want to talk about uh, now. And I actually want to start uh, with step four being sort of a, a key step for explaining what's going on here. So remember what we had said at our fiscal year end, we are legally owed $235,000, right? People, our customers legally owe us that money. But as the accountant, you know, not everybody's gonna pay. Some people are gonna go bankrupt. Some people are gonna dispute their bill. We are not likely to collect $235,000. Because we don't know who's not gonna pay. If I know exactly who's not gonna pay, I should write off their accounts receivable. I should not call it accounts receivable anymore because it's not gonna be received. It's not gonna have any future economic benefit. I should write it off. But because for the most part, I don't know which of these $235,000 in receivables isn't going to come in. I don't know which customers aren't going to pay. I can't write them off. So what I have to do is I have to estimate how many 
dollars aren't going to flow in. And the estimate is this account. It's the allowance for doubtful accounts. And it's almost like a cookie jar. It's almost like, okay, I know I'm owed 235 grand, but I'm setting aside $26,000 to not come in. It's like rainy day fund or something like, look, I have this set aside. I'm ready for the fact that $26,000 might not come in. So what do I tell my shareholders? I say, I'm going to get 208, maybe close to $209,000. This is the number I think I can collect. This is the number, 208,000, that I put on my balance sheet. I don't put 235 on my balance sheet. I put 208 on my balance sheet because that's what I actually think I can collect. Remember the definition of an asset. An asset is uh, uh, something you own and control that's good to own or control that gives you a future economic benefit, right? Well, 235 grand that I don't think I'm going to collect, that's no, there's no future economic benefit there, right? I'm not going to get 10% of that money. So $208,000, that is actually what I think I can collect. That's what I should show as my asset. And so that's what companies do show. If you look up your favorite company under their receivables, it's going to say, net receivables. And that means they've taken out an allowance. That means they've estimated some amount of that is going to be uncollectible. And it is an accounting estimate. Um, okay. So I just want to reiterate our steps here. And I, I hope the explanation was clear. We've said we want to estimate our bad debts based on percentage of sales. We take a percentage of our credit sales typically. Uh, and the reason, why don't I take a percentage of my cash sales? Well, those have already been collected, right? There's a 100% chance those are coming in. Those are all collectible. So we took 2% of our credit sales. Uh, we calculated our credit sales, took 2% of that. We got 28040. That becomes our bad debt expense, debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance. Uh, uh, update our allowance T account in step three and step four, show how AR would be presented. Uh, sometimes a student will ask me, well, wait, if allowance always ends in a credit and we always are crediting it, it always is going to end as a credit. How on earth did it get to a debit here? I'd like you to think about that question. How did the allowance become a debit? And the answer is, think of the allowance as a cookie jar. And every time a debt actually goes bad, we use some of the allowance. So I'm going to make up a, a part to this. Let's assume, uh, when was our fiscal year? May 31st. So let's assume on July 1st, 2024, we want to write off a $2,000 account receivable, right? Somebody's debt goes bad. What do we do? Well, we credit their accounts receivable because we're saying, hey, we're giving up on them, whoever they are, $2,000, and we debit not bad debt expense, not the expense related to this. We debit the allowance. We're using up some of this allowance, right? This 26 grand in credit. Now we're going to use some of it up. So I debit allowance 2000. So how did I end up with a debit balance of 2000 in my allowance? Well, if I had a $26,000 credit in my allowance, I must have written off 28,000. I must have written off more than I allowed for. If I, and you'll see it in the next question, if I end up with a credit balance in my allowance, it means I didn't use up all of my allowance from last year. Again, a debit balance in the allowance means you used up more allowance than you had. A credit balance in the allowance means you didn't use up all of the allowance. So uh, I think that point is important. It's one I often ask my students about on midterm exams, like how can we end up with a debit or a credit? And they have to figure out, okay, I wrote off too much, more than my allowance, or I didn't write off all of my allowance. Uh, but it's a confusing concept. And I, I hope that explanation at least helped to shed some light on it. All right, that's it for this video. In our next video, uh, well, in problem five, four anyway, which should be the next video, uh, we're going to run through the aging of receivables method. That's all for this video. Stay tuned for the next one.